So with those five things set on your enlarger, you're now ready to go ahead and do the exposure. Before we can get out photo paper, however, we need to put this little red filter under the lens. And you can see my light is shining on top of the filter there. I still have my light on. The filter is red, so it's going to protect the unexposed paper from light so that it doesn't get exposed, but allows you at the same time to have a light to be able to get everything set up, get your paper set where it needs to be. So make sure you have that red filter under your lens before you get out your photo paper. So I'm going to get out, I have a piece of, um, this is very exposed photo paper already, but I'm using this for my demo. Okay, so you're gonna get your four by five. Um, you can see that it is shiny. Okay, I'm making, gonna make sure that the shiny side of my new paper is facing up. I'm gonna line that up, which is hard to see at this point under my light, but you'll be able to see that better with the lights off in the dark room. And I'm gonna put my negative face down on top of that. I'll just line those up as best I can, okay? Now, in the drawers at the enlarger station, if you're at one of the um, probably 12 out of 15 that have drawers, 13 out of 15 that have drawers, in one of your two drawers, it's usually the one on the left, you'll, you should be able to find a piece of glass and a piece of cardboard. So you're gonna get those out for the test strip. You do want to make sure your glass is clean. If you have a lot of fingerprints or water spots on the glass, that will show up in your positive if that is over the area that you're putting on top of your photo paper. So you can take that out into the classroom. There is glass cleaner out there and paper towels. Put it on a, on a uh, tabletop to clean it so that you don't accidentally drop it and break it. So I'm going to place this on top of my photo paper my two pieces, okay, just like I had drawn on the board. I'm gonna place the cardboard on top of them. You can see my red light a little bit better now. Um, and I'm gonna cover up everything except for about an inch of my photo paper. Okay, so now I'm ready to do the exposure. I still have my light on, on the enlarger. You can see that kind of shining on the uh, red filter there. And I still have this red filter under there. So I need to do a couple of things. First thing is I'm going to hit the focus button. Remember that's kind of the on off button for the enlarger light. So I'm gonna push that, you'll hear it click, and that turns the light off. Now I can move this red filter out of the way that just swings in and out. So I'm gonna push that off to the side and I'm gonna hit the run button on the timer and that will do my timed exposure. So when I hit that, the light turns on, it counts down five seconds and then automatically turns the light back off. So that has exposed for five seconds. Then I'm gonna move the cardboard down about another inch and I'm gonna hit run again. So that will go for another five seconds and turn itself back off. So this strip has been exposed for five seconds, but this one has now been exposed for 10. So as I move it over, the ones that have already been exposed will keep increasing in time. So I'm gonna hit run again. That will go for five seconds. Turn off, move that down a little bit more. I can probably, you should be able to get four, five, maybe six strips on there when you're doing your test strip, um, depending on how wide you make those strips really. And then I have about an inch left, so I'm just gonna take the cardboard off and expose it, expose that last strip one more time or one last exposure. So I have one for five, 10, 15, 20, and possibly 25. Don't quite remember how many I did there, but you get the idea. So I can take the glass off. I'm gonna leave that sit off to the side I have my negative, I'm gonna leave that here for when I do my final exposure. And then I'm gonna go take this, uh, which will be blank when you do that. Go take that and develop it at the sink just as you developed your negative. Nothing is different with the times on the developing. Now, if you make your test strip, but you don't have enough time to come back and make your final 
uh, positive, a couple things you need to do to make sure that when you come back the next day, everything is consistent. First of all, you'll want to write down what number in larger you're on. They're all numbered 1 through 15. Okay, so write down the number to make sure you remember which one you were at. The brightness of the bulb can make a difference. You'll also notice that along the post, and this post goes all the way up towards the ceiling, uh, there is a ruler along there. So you can write down the height of your enlarger and where exactly you had it when you did the exposure. So you can see that I'm probably right at eight. If I nudge that up just a, a smidge, you can see I was one notch below eight, okay? So I can write down my height and record that and know the next day where that needs to be. And then we'll also take a look at your test strip and figure out what your time should be. So that can make a, uh, that can all make a difference. The height of the enlarger, um, the number of the enlarger, everything needs to be as consistent as possible in order for your time to be consistent. So make sure that when you're even developing that you even go to the same sink because the strength of the chemicals might be different from one sink to the other. So just be as consistent as possible when you are in between doing test strips and the final.